recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash you. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the Alma Dyer. Of your Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vengeance. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Alma Dyer. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Alma Dyer. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Touch one of my new sons. They show no love for the queen. Why they hate? 
hating on me Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got All right, hello everyone, Grand Rising. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your first morning wake up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A Shakur, and Twitter at DGoddess27. And also, you already know how it goes. If you don't like what the queen is cooking, uh, please exit stage left and do not uh, let the virtual door not hit, hit you hit you on your way out, okay? Because I had somebody complain in the comments yesterday, but I'll get into that in a moment. Now, I want to say to all of you, please double check to make sure you're still subscribed to the channel, especially if you have not been receiving your notifications. I have had three people email me uh, last night and this morning telling me that they have been unsubscribed, okay? Uh, so please double check to make sure because you know how they do the queen on these YouTube streets, all right? Well, that all being said, uh, before I get started with my receipts, let me just say this. I had somebody left me a comment yesterday. I don't know why people choose to leave me these ridiculous comments. I keep telling them, if you don't like what I'm doing, why are you on here? Why are you in my chats? Why are you watching, period? And why are you leaving comments? Okay, because for you to leave comments, that lets me know that you watched the video and you more than likely watched all of it. And so this person left me a comment. Um, hold on. Let me see somebody starting mess already. Hold up. Here we go. See, Martina says, why are we talking about Diddy? I want my reparations. Power to the people. <laughs> uh, Mr. C. Martinez, with your last name, beloved, do you deserve reparations? I, I have so many questions. Mr. Martinez, are you an African-American? Talking about power to the people with the last name Martinez, are we sure you want reparations, beloved? Are you sure? First of all, let me say. First of all, let me say, uh, C. Martinez, here's the thing. Bronze Fat Pearl God says, C. Martinez, Queen, runs her show uh, the way she wants it. Thank you, beloveds. Okay, but hold on. Let me just tell this thing, uh, uh, tell this man a thing or two. Her place said, that's a troll. I called him out yesterday to the mods. Hold on. That's okay, because we're going to let the trolls live today. Moderators, don't block trolls. Don't block the trolls. Let the trolls speak. Because the queen has time today. See, Martina said, my mom is black. Oh, okay, but your last name is Martinez. And since we go by uh, the father, that means what? Yeah, I don't think you deserve no reparations more than likely, Mr. C. Martinez. But even if you do, let's talk about it. I'm so glad you brought it up. I'm so glad you brought it up because the queen got time and I got receipts. See, I always expect the unexpected. Uh, Mr. C. Martinez. What part of the country do you live in? Do you care to tell the queen what part of the country you live in? I'm about to pull up these receipts, honey, because y'all not going to play with me today. Y'all going to stop playing with the queen. Please pay attention. Oh, I'm so glad you asked about these reparations, okay? Let the trolls live today because the queen has time, okay? All right, let's just be fair. Okay, so here, Mr. Martinez, listen to this. Governor Hochul, that's the governor of New York, okay? Governor Hochul announces Holocaust claims Processing office secured $183 million for victims and beneficiaries. For victims and beneficiaries. You know what that means? That means not only do the victims get it, but their beneficiaries do. And if the victims are passed away and deceased, well, that goes directly to their beneficiaries. Okay. That's $183 million. Now, what should pay attention? Because you see, what does this have to do with reparations for you, Mr. Martinez? Well, I'm so glad you asked, beloved. What it has to do with is this. We're not getting reparations ever, okay? We're not getting reparations ever. You see, I was on the reparations bandwagon also, and I once realized that we're not ever going to get them because if, in fact, they wanted us to have reparations, they would have given them to us already. They would have allotted the money and set it aside. You see, it's interesting how they find money for everything else and for everyone else, but when it comes to people who look like me, well, this is what they do. Mr. Martinez says, hold on, hold on. Let me pull up his next comment. Mr. Martinez says, I don't care about the governor. I want my reparations. <laughs> 
Well, I'm afraid you're not going to get them, beloved, even though I don't know if you really qualify. Now, here's what it says. Governor Kathy Hochul announced that the New York State Department of Financial Services Holocaust Claims Processing Office, which assists Holocaust victims and their heirs to recover stolen assets, has helped secure, has helped secure, has helped secure. Cure, please pay attention. I return over $183 million in compensation to the victims for, uh, and their heirs uh, from, bank ins from bank insurance and other material losses. Additionally, through this initiative, the Department of Financial Services has facilitated settlements involving over 250 cultural objects since its inception in 1997 saying that with each passing year, our living memory of the Holocaust may get further away, but it is imperative that we stand firm on our goal of dispelling anti-Semitism. Hate has no home in New York, and my administration remains committed to uplifting Holocaust survivors and their families while continuing to honor the memory of the six million lives taken far too soon. I want y'all to pay attention. I'm so glad Mr. C. Martinez hopped into the chat to troll the Queen today, because here's what I have to tell you. Be love, Ed. That's why you're not getting any reparations. That's why you nor me nor anyone that looks like me is ever getting reparations in this country, ever. Could y'all please stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe? How many times do they have to tell us that they need to have a reparations committee? How many reparations rallies can you attend before it sinks in? They're never going to give you reparations. They've given it to everyone. They gave it to the Italians for the things they did to them years ago. And they gave it to the Japanese for the bombing of Hiroshima and Kimosaki. Okay? Or uh, Nagasaki. But anyway, at the end of the day, this is what it is. Okay? Now, they're and they've already given it to uh, the Holocaust victims, and they've given them even more. Okay, so please miss me with it. With it, I mean, sir, your problem is not with me, all right? Your problem is not with me. Uh, so don't get mad about what I'm talking about because I'm going to talk about what I want to, sir. All right, now, can I get done? All right, these people even gave it to the, the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the thing is, please pay attention, the Holocaust happened in Germany. That didn't even happen here. But our situation did with the slaves that were brought here and all the things that have happened to us, uh, Jim Crow, medical genocide, all of these things happened right here. But they can't put money aside for us. They don't say we want to forget about the ills of slavery. We want to right the wrongs. We want to prepare the wrongs. We want to prepare the hurt, harm, and damage, the generational trauma the post-traumatic slave syndrome, we want to fix all of that. We're going to give you compensation. No, they don't say that ever. So they're not going to say it. All right. They're not going to say it. <laughs> Look at it still going, where's my check? I want my money. Uh, sir, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, honey. But at the end of the day, you're not getting those reparations. Like I said, I'm not even sure if you're qualified to receive them, but nonetheless. <laughs> Purple said, hey, man, go to your page platform and express yourself. <laughs> Let him ride it on out, honey, because clearly he's pressed about those reparations. I mean, I was, too, until I realized, like I said, we're not getting them. Uh, so that all being said, can we continue? <laughs> now, Mr. C. Martinez, can I please talk about Diddy? Is it okay? <laughs> Do y'all know how annoyed I get with people coming out here trying to act like I don't talk about anything relevant, pertinent? Let me tell y'all something. I have a very good video for you guys today. I think I'm going to do it at about 6 o'clock. I was going to do it this morning, but I decided to talk about Diddy and talk about the important stuff later because some of you guys are at work. You won't be able to get your full attention. And, you know, I know some of you like for me to do things uh, of importance in the evenings after 6. So we're going to go live at 6 o'clock because I got some very important information for you guys. Like I told you all yesterday, I did a whole PowerPoint. Okay, this is something you need to know. Uh, but uh, Mr. C. Martinez said, I'll never tell you about those reparations. Good luck with that is all I can tell you. <laughs> okay, good luck with that. And for those of you who look like me, because I don't think Mr. C. Martinez does, but nonetheless, for the rest of you who look like me, honey, if you're still waiting on reparations, please stop. It's not happening. Okay, it is not happening. Unfortunately, we deserve it, but it's not going to happen. All right, and so that I've been saying, let me get my little background music. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jeff Queen talks about all topics. Thank you, beloved. Okay. Jeff ATL said, what channel can we watch the solar eclipse? Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be live on the solar uh, when the solar eclipse comes, beloved. I'm gonna be outside. Queen's gonna be outside. Okay, if anything changes, I'll let you know. Uh, John Force at Hotel Queen. Uh, your song is fire. Do you write your own songs? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, beloved. I write poetry too and do and perform spoken word. Thank you, beloved. I'm multi talented, shall I say. Now, with that all being said, I'm going to get into these receipts about Oprah and Diddy. But before I do, let's have a visit down memory lane. Okay, let's have a visit down memory lane with some old footage that I showed you all, some old receipts uh, that some of you may have forgotten about. For example, how Gene Deal said that um, Diddy learned it from Russell Simmons and how Jimmy the Henchman, a.k.a. James Roseman, I told you all this back in December, basically that he was uh, asked about Diddy years ago, back in 2011, 2013, asked about Diddy messing around with young boys. Also, let's not forget that Kim Porter's sister, I reported to you, uh, that she supposedly accused Diddy of doing things with Justin Bieber. Now, I want you all to pay attention. So I'm going to pull those receipts up so we can revisit it. Like stuff, everyone, please like and share. Just remember you heard this stuff here first. Pay attention. Of us. Um, Mr. C. Martinez threw me off. He threw me off for a minute because what I was about to tell you guys before I started was that I had someone leave me a comment yesterday and they basically told me someone who clearly has not been on this channel for long because they only had one comment on the channel. So that's how I know they just came on. But this person told me that they don't like when they have to wait for me to look for stuff and that that's not what you all donate to me for. But, well, here's the thing. Donations are voluntary, not mandatory. So no one has to donate. People that donate do so because they want to. And like I told him, sir, you've never donated anything to this channel, so please sit down somewhere. At the end of the day, you don't have to donate. You don't have to watch. You don't have to tune in. You don't have to subscribe. So if me stopping to pause to look for my receipts is of an inconvenience, why was he here? I'm sorry. That's how it is when you have all these receipts. Sometimes you got to pause and look for it. Okay, so I just want to put that out there for anyone else who has a complaint or gripe. I don't know why people keep coming for me when I've already said a thousand times at the end of the day uh, that if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know what to do. Okay? Okay, so now let's get to it. Now let's get to it. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Okay, so let me go to the video. So the audio of Gene Deal talking about how Diddy learned it from Russell Simmons. Here we go. The left to the left. I absolutely cannot. <laughs> Miss Stevenson, I just talks about how he's going to say something about the church. I played that audio. You know. You are a part of revolt. Saints. Make sure I'm putting up the right one. Here it is. Hey, man, I mean, I don't know what to say, man. I mean, you got a good point, man. Why is T.D. Jace at a Diddy party? I mean, it don't make no sense, man. Well, you know, I grew up in the church, bro. You understand? I Pentecostal church, then Baptist, Methodist. I've I've been in all the churches, man. You know, I almost I almost was a seven day evangelist. But what I do know, the sinners do not. So the saints supposed to separate themselves from the sinners. You could tell the difference between a saint and a sinner. You understand? So him being up in a ditty party. And it wasn't like that he wasn't partying because the tape that I saw, he was dancing. And I'm like, wow, this the fuck, excuse me, this the rev <laughs> at the Diddy party? I wonder who he laying hands on. 
<laughs> who he saved. <laughs> but all jokes aside, man, you know, the saints supposed to be separate from the sinners. There's no way that you know what happens in Diddy Party and you're supposed to be a Christian. You understand? You're supposed to be uh, 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 his spiritual advisor and you up in this party. Well, why are you there? Because it ain't like he can't come to your church, he can't come to your office. And I know that, you know, you are a part of revolt. You understand? But are you looking for something else up in there? We just we just gonna hope that uh he ain't looking for the same thing Eddie Long was looking for. You know and Diddy, right? You've been knowing him since the beginning. Like what happened, man? Like what made him get into all this freaky stuff? Like him making his girl look up BBCs and him making male prostitutes smash his girl. Like what happened, man? Like I'm sure he was a normal dude at first. Like what made him get into all this weirdo stuff? Bro, one individual is not here to defend himself. And that's Andre Harrell. Russell Simmons was one of his mentors too. What is Russell Simmons going through? He's going through women saying that he was abusive, women saying that they, they raped him, women saying that he drugged him. If you learn things like that from the people that you're around, the people that you hold high regards to, then you're gonna become what they were. And with the fact that you taking drugs and everything now, It'll go rapid on you. And that's what happened to him, bro. Yo, I seen Puff smoke cigarettes, smoke weed on camera. And that wasn't the same dude that I knew. So my, I'm looking at this dude like, yo, all he did was go to the third to the fourth power with this shit. He had it in him because he learned it from the beginning by seeing them and by being around them. And that's Russell Simmons, Andre Harrell now, being at those parties. So Russell Simmons and Andre Harrell is where Diddy got it from. Like all these wild parties and all this freaky stuff, it came from them. Well, bro, yeah, that's where he got it from. Andre ain't here to defend himself, but he was giving wild parties. They were doing things like that. My man Bill was his bodyguard. So they was doing things like that. So now you got women that came out and said Russell Simmons was doing stuff like that. But Russell Simmons said, I wasn't doing that because uh, I took seven, eight, nine lie detector tests and I passed them. Yeah, Russell, you also studied your, uh, into that Buddhism and you that yoga stuff like that so you know how to control your body to let you know so you don't have any kind of panic mode when you take those tests. Keep it above. That's why you got into that Zen shit. You take a lot of detective tests, it's not gonna come up because you know how to control your body. Wow, I never thought about that, man. So that's why he be passing all these lot of detective tests. Yeah, because he, he studied yoga, he studied Zen, he studied all those, that Buddhism thing, all that shit like that. To learn how to control his breathing, his mind, his whole nine yards. That's why when guys, you know, if you ever seen somebody giving polygraph tests and they used to do it in our office and everything like that, you know what I'm saying? They have to ask you questions that you know that you're going to tell the truth at and questions that you know that you're going to lie to. So all he did was master that by mastering the, the control of his body. taught Diddy what he knows, that Diddy got the party and all of that stuff from Andre Harrell and Russell. Okay, so please pay attention. And then here's the thing. That's why I told you guys, Russell Simmons, I believe everything that he was accused of because why did he plead somebody? Also, one of the women that I saw that was talking about what happened to her, you could see the pain in her face. As far as I'm concerned, she was very believable. And this 
The fact that I told y'all the other day that Oprah covered for Russell, see, she tried to act like, you know, she wasn't for him. She was with the women. But then she said, which was hypocritical and contradictory, remember, she said that she didn't want to do the documentary. She took her name off of it because there were inconsistencies with the women's stories. That was her excuse. But like I told you, she didn't mind having those two little lying dudes on there to say things about Michael Jackson. And their stories were very inconsistent. They said something previously when Michael was on trial. And now they come back changing their story. Okay, and she didn't have a problem with that being inconsistent. So she's full of crap. She was basically covering for him. And that's because Oprah has partied with Diddy and Russell Simmons for decades. Okay, she's partied with them for decades. But before I get into the receipts, let's talk about another thing that I told you all, in case you all forgot about it. Um, James Roseman, Jimmy the Henchman, he had said that police questioned him in a proffer deal. Okay, this was years ago, reported in 2013, and asking him about Diddy's preferences, about other celebrities, and about minors. Okay, please pay attention. But these people want to sit up and cake for Diddy. That's why I told you some of these people are likely predators themselves. Okay, I don't care what they say. All right, they can get mad all they want at the end of the day. And so, with that all being said, likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Now, I'm going to pull up this old footage. This is a, from a video that I did back in December. Because I was the first one that broke the story on this. Please pay attention. Um, where are we? Likes up. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. And also, let's not forget that I told you all about how Diddy threatened to throw uh, Miss Jones in the trunk. Okay, here we go. Let me cue the video. And also, there's audio on this video of Jimmy the Henchman speaking. Okay, there's literally audio of him on here. Uh, so let's get into it. Like up, everyone, please like and share. This is him literally talking to the police. Yeah. Well, G, G, uh, I mean, I'm shit. I don't, we don't wipe the ass. I don't quit. You know, it's not. $1 now this is Dwayne Keefe Davis. I didn't mean to play this part, but it's coming right up. P. Diddy, what do you have to say about that? Now it was a documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check out. We don't we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. Mm -hmm. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect, but I appreciate you as a journalist asking. Okay. Thank you. Cause you listen, seven years ago, I'd have been like, yo, did you have somebody to kill my? But no, you have to do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's Which you never believed, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, that was then, and this is now. P. Diddy better pray to whoever he prays to that during Keefe D's trial, Keefe D cannot furnish not one receipt to back up his story. Because I'm telling you, if somehow Keefe D does manage to pull out a receipt like a rabbit from like a magician's hat during that trial, it's a wrap for P. Diddy. Five, Jimmy Henchman. For all of you out there who don't know who Jimmy the Henchman is, Jimmy is often referred to as the boogeyman of hip hop. And he's the dude that allegedly set up Pac at Quad Studios and also put nine in 50 Cent. But I'm not going to tell you about Jimmy. I'll let Jimmy tell you about himself. I'm here with the henchman. Midtown, downtown Manhattan. I'm sitting here with Jimmy Henchman. Okay, now this is Jimmy the Henchman speaking. We'll talk about that more. So there's no uh, pure henchmen. This henchman is basically um, a bunch of producers. Um, I mean, the basic concept of henchmen was that, you know, it would be a production company um, facilitating beats for the industry. And that's how basically the henchman organization was um, was established. Uh, the henchman, you mean what the meaning of henchman is? 
Yeah. Uh, the, the meaning of henchman basically is, you know, a loyal companion, a loyal, a loyal soldier, yeah. you know, a loyal friend, a trusted friend. You know, all of those good things. Sometimes people taste this name henchman and they try to make it seem like that it's some dark, some kind of villain or something, but henchman doesn't mean none of that to us, you know. And basically I did. And and at the time when I when you know that was, which was a decade ago when, when I was trying to come up with a name that was street, you know, um and could could do the same things in the, in the music industry. Um, Puffy had already to bad boys. I mean, that was always like something in the back of my mind. So I needed something just as dope as the bad boy name. So I thought henchman was 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 good enough for that. You know, that where I could still keep my edgy streetness and and then blend that into the music business. Um, around 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 10 years ago around 1990 okay yeah we've been in the game about 10 years now okay about 10 years now i mean like i said the henchmen stand for being a good friend okay. one of the things that we've always facilitated was that we've always been good friends to those who's, who've been in this business. We've been the friends to the Russell Simmons, to the Leos, to the, you know, the Andre Rails, and um, even to Puffy, and, and and those, and you know, that's that's what we are, that's what we do best, is that um, we're their friends, we, we talk to them when they need somebody to talk to, you know? We, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different ways, like, you know, they're, they're always when you when you making that transition, people want to utilize the, the the part of you that they think you know best. And a lot of time, you know, if you come from the streets, that's what they want to utilize. But you know, the thing is too is that that and that's what I think a lot of these dudes in the industry, and then there's some dudes in the streets that they don't understand what beef really is. It's like, how do you walk around? and saying you got beef with a guy, but a guy is still, you still seeing the guy and you know what I'm saying? And oh, you're just waiting for him to kill you. You wait for a chance to kill him. That's, that's not really beef. That's just some, you know, you wait for, to, for a nigga to turn his back. And you know what I'm saying? That's how the town is killed. So, some coward ass murders, you know, when a nigga get in the front seat, you want to choke him out or shoot him in the back of the head. But, um, that's that coward murder shit, so. Hmm. That's interesting. Why is the dude who just facilitates beats talking about murders? Now, I'm sure that Jimmy lives by certain street codes that prevent him from being a snitch. But if he ever did decide to flip, he could make P. Diddy his biatch. Because I'm sure he knows some dirt on Diddy that would make P. Diddy pee in his pants instead of whizzing on young Miami. Oh, wait a minute. I might have spoke too fast. Because according to WAC 100, the feds have offered Jimmy the Henchman like eight or nine proffer agreements, a.k.a. Queen for a Day agreements. And guess who he mentioned? P. Diddy. Check this out. Now, this is where it gets weird. So so we know what Jimmy Henchman did. We know, you know, he was known as, a, you know, Big old drug kingpin, whatever, you know what I mean? They, they showed him eight of his affiliates, cocaine suppliers. They had him agree to certain murder plots that they were involved in, included in. But it says, during, during a debriefing session with the federal investigators, Jimmy Henchman, also known as uh, James Roseman, the music manager turned cocaine kingpin, was reportedly questioned about the sexual preferences of entertainers including whether Sean Diddy Combs was having sexual relationships with underage boys, according to the United States District Court filing. So it's filed on paper that they actually asked him about Diddy's dealing with underage boys. Now, why would they ask Diddy about any, or why would they ask him about Diddy's dealings with underage boys? And why did they say that a number of other big name entertainers you know, we had R. Kelly kind of hint and insinuate that he ain't the only mother that's been moving foul, right? But Diddy's name was implemented in this. Like, what the 
is going on? New York, I need some answers. Any okay, so please pay attention because they asked Jimmy the henchman about Diddy having intimate relations with young underage boys as well as they mentioned other people, but specifically Diddy. So I want you all to pay attention to that because as far as Cassie was likely concerned, because she knows, I'm sure, all of the dirt on Diddy, including what happened to Kim. Okay, so you all heard that. Now that that is an excerpt from an old video, like I said, that I did back in uh, December. Now, you may remember that in that same video, hold on, let me pull that back up real quick. Likes up, please, get the likes up, thank you in advance. Including what happened to Kim Porter. I'm gonna for fast forward. He has amassed nearly 51, or I'm sorry, nearly $1 billion from the partnership. The Aguio and Combs have partnered on Ciroc Vodka since 2007. In 2015, Combs brought uh, De, De Leon and formed a joint venture with the Aguio for the high-end tequila. Diddy said in the lawsuit that the Aguio kneecapped De Leon's sales growth for nearly a decade because the company considered it a black brand and marketed it to only urban customers. He also claimed that a Diageo executive told him that if Combs were Martha Stewart, then his brands would be more widespread. Diageo denied those accusations. Here's the thing. You see, for years, before I continue, let me say this. For years, Diddy has acted as a shield, okay, for the Democrats. He's acted as a raccoon for these people that he's dealt with like Clive Davis and others. And by that, I mean that he's allowed them to put him out there, you know, uh, trying to persuade black people's votes and all of that, you know, and doing all sorts of other things. But at the end of the day, just like all of these raccoons, they always get their ninja wake up call. You see, Diddy thought because he had all this power and protection, all this money that they've allowed him to accumulate and acquire, he thought that he's gonna now be on their level, but he's still just another ninja to them. Combs have part He's dead now too. Okay, so with that I've been said. Okay, so with that I've been said, I want you all to pay attention. That was an old video, like I said, from back in December when I told you all that the reason all this stuff was happening to Diddy was because of Diageo. Okay, I was the first one that told you all that uh, at the end of the day. And also, please pay attention. How are people caping for him when they already thought something was up with him back in 2013? And here's the reason he likely wasn't, you know, ever charged with any of the stuff they were trying to find out. Because he had a person that was in the FBI that he was working with. Okay, according to Gene Deal and according to documentation, this is an alleged, I showed you the receipts, that he was a whole informant. Okay? And on that same video, I said that I believe that he was an informant. So I just want you all to pay attention. I had Diddy Pay from day one at the end of the day. Please pay attention. Now, let's go to this old video that I was looking for yesterday with, oh, and here's another thing too. Not only did they question Jimmy the Henchman uh, as, they, as they said in that video, but also, and Jimmy wasn't talking to the police, I'm sorry, and the audio, he was talking to someone who was interviewing him. And he was clearly lying about why he's called Jimmy the Henchman, okay? I want you all to pay attention, okay? We know why you would call yourself Henchman, why anyone would call themselves that, but he tried to act like that was just something that meant family, that everybody's sticking together and all of this foolishness. But also, during that proffer session, when they spoke to Jimmy, if you'll remember, on the same video I told you about how they showed him pictures of naked women when they were asking him about Diddy's preferences and about other celebrities trying to get all this dirt, offering him a shorter sentence and all of that. But they were very disappointed because he wouldn't cooperate. Okay, and they showed him pictures of these nude women and basically they, they never said, it was never reported as to why uh, they showed the pictures of those women. Okay, so please pay attention. All right, Leonard said, Queen tells no lies. Thank you, beloved. Uh, so at the end of the day, Diddy's been under the radar and been shaped, okay? And see, now all he's done is given them a good reason to come after him because they were talking to Jimmy the Hitchman all that time ago. They said specifically they were trying to find crimes on him, other crimes, okay? Because he already had a, um, a rap sheet a mile long at that point. 
Okay, he already had a rap sheet a mile long. Um, I went through the list of his charges and the things he'd been accused of in that same video, I do believe. Okay, so please pay attention. Now, with that all being said, with that all being said, let me tell you guys this. Because today is the day of the eclipse and the information that I'm giving you has to do with the eclipse, I'm going to go live with that information right after this live. Uh, the backup channel, I schedule that live for later on. Okay, I just changed the time on that. Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what I did. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Uh, so I changed the backup channels live to six o'clock. And so I'm going to go live on this very important live right after this one on this same channel. Okay, I'm going to post in a second. Now, with that all being said, let's look at this old video with Diddy and Oprah. Because for one, Diddy was so cool with Oprah. Oprah has been going to his parties. Not only has she been going to his parties for decades, he would go to Oprah for advice and things of that nature. Okay, so please pay attention. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Lights up, everyone. Please like and share. I'm going to put something, an overlay on the screen as to edit the video in some way. Okay, so I don't have any copyright issues. Got the music playing, so that'll alter it somewhat as well. Okay, here we go. This is from March the 8th of 1998, a conversation with Diddy. This is him and his good friend, Oprah, who's not speaking of him right now, who's not showing any support for it. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder with MTV News. The show you're about to see is a conversation with producer, performer, and all-round record mogul Puffy Combs. It was recorded last March, just after the murder of Puffy's friend and protege Biggie Smalls, the notorious B.I.G., and before the posthumous release of Biggie's album, Life After Death. Puffy, a behind-the-scenes man, had already become a star in his own right with his number one hit, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. He, of course, had not yet recorded his Biggie tribute, I'll Be Missing You, or released his own hit album, No Way Out. He was, however, his own eloquent self, as you're about to see. I wonder if for, for hopefully the last time you could take us through what happened on the night that Biggie was killed. I mean, you, you guys show up at a party, right? And you're not expecting anything to go wrong, obviously. What proceeded to transpire? Oh. Okay. Biggie, myself, we decided to go out to L.A. because we had, we shot the video out there. It was just better production value out of Los Angeles, the place where they make movies and everything. Yeah. So we decided to go out there and shoot the video. And while he was out there, he wanted to also do as much damage control as he could do as far as what was done to, him, to himself and his career as far as him so-called being involved in this East Coast, West Coast robbery. So he wanted to go out there and make sure that the fans heard him say it. So he was doing radio interviews and um, press interviews. And also he was doing rehearsal for spring break and um, doing shooting his video. And that's all he was doing. And he decided also Soul Train Music Awards being presented there with myself. And we decided to go out to the party because we felt it was a private party. It wasn't like we were trying to be out and being seen all over the place. We were trying to go out and um, go there because it was a private party. So the night of the party, we went there and we basically sat at the table all night. And a lot of people were coming and giving us positive greetings. And everybody at the party was just having a good time and dancing. And we were sitting there just talking all night and just listening to everybody else's music and listening to our own records and feeling a sense of proudness hearing hearing a record and just seeing all the people dance to your music, because that's why we got into this. And so as time progressed, the party had got too crowded and the fire marshals had um, shut the party down. And so Biggie had a broken leg at the time, so it took us a while to get out. So we finally walked out, because he was just walking with a cane. Yeah. And we got out, so we stood outside for like five minutes and we just talked for a little bit just about regular things that we talk about, nothing really with Ben. He talked about his album a little bit and just talked to me. We were just talking about things that two guys talk about, you know what I'm saying? About the party girls, whatever. And then we got into the cars. We just said, it's time to leave. And my car was in front. Biggie was in the middle. And then another security vehicle was um, behind, mm -hmm. which had the off-duty officers in. And um, we left out of the 
out of the driveway of the parking lot and we made a right. And um, as we made the right, we were just driving and the vehicles were one behind each other. And um, I was looking straight ahead basically and um, I just heard shots ring out. And when the shots rang out, I had immediately did the human reaction. I had just ducked down and everybody in the car ducked down. And then um, our car was still, you know, had like sped off. And then um, I heard somebody say Vicky's car had got shot at. And so like while my car was moving, I had just opened the door and the, the driver, he stopped and I had jumped out and I had ran to the car. And I had immediately did that because I knew his leg was broke. So I knew there's no way he could have made it out of the car. And then when I went there to the car, I opened up the door and he was, opened up the door and he was hunched over and and I was trying to talk to him and trying to move him over and I was trying to tell somebody to call 911 but I just told I was like by the time they get I didn't know what was going on because he wasn't talking back to me so I just told one of the drivers of security to, to just jump in the car just take me to the nearest um, hospital please and we were rushing to the hospital and there were other cars that were with us and other people that were just following us and as we got there, everybody helped him out of the car. And I was just, as we were driving, I was talking to him, but I wasn't hearing anything. He wasn't saying anything. And, and I was just getting scared, you know, because I was just like, I didn't know, like, I, I was like, why isn't he talking to me? And I was just getting scared, but I was just started praying over him and praying and just trying to tell him just to stay in there. And then when we got to the hospital, Everybody had jumped out the cars and helped to pick him up and got him on a stretcher. And the surgeons, they had immediately rushed him back into the emergency room. And then I just, everybody there just dropped to their knees and started praying because it, it just didn't look good. It didn't feel good. And that's what happened. And then they came and told us, you know, that he had passed. And it was just unbelievable. How are, how are uh, Biggie's mom and, and Faith and the, and the kids taking all this? Are they, are they, did they bounce back at all? Or are they still? Well, their moms and Faith, um, Biggie's moms and Faith and the children are extremely strong. They've been, matter of fact, they've been strong for me and helping to hold me up. And it's just, his mother is just such a beautiful woman. You know what I'm saying? And she's from the church. And I'm just so happy that their relationship was, was good when, you know, before he passed. And, um, she's very, she's a very strong woman and faith is very strong and I'm going to be there for them just like he would be there for them to make sure that they are. Yeah. The, a lot of the a number of reports have come out, uh, Time Magazine and the LA Times have pointed out people that we've talked to also that uh, Bad Boy Entertainment ha had actually hired Crips for security work out on the West Coast. Is that true? Um, we've never hired Crips or any other gang faction to do security for us. Um, what is the misconception is that because we're young and we're black, like we're not handling business just like anybody else. We're trying our best to handle business just like any other businessman that's out there in the world. And it would be, it would be extremely unintelligent to hire yeah. um, a gang, some gangs to do security for you. We have never, emphatically, never hired any gangs for security. We hire, as a matter of fact, when. We were out there, we had off-duty California police officers at security mm -hmm. with us that night that it happened also. And um, we always have bonded security professionals that are with us. I mean, the, the, you know, Compton police have said that they, that's what they've heard from gang informants that there it's have just been. Not, it's not the truth. I'm here to make sure I tell you the truth. Is it possible that someone below you could have done this? I no. mean, maybe. It's or... not possible. I have, a, I have a small boutique label and I take responsibility for, for everything that comes from my label. And I know for a fact that this is something that has never happened. And I, I've heard your report about an affidavit, affidavit mm -hmm. from the Compton police, but I'm just here to say that it's not the truth. Yeah. No one, and I, and I see everything I sign off on, everything that's done. And I know the security that we hired or bonded security men and also off-duty California police officers, just like, you know, that's the same route right, Madonna yeah. would take or, right. you know, anybody that's in entertainment to, you know, so yeah. that's alone would hire uh, the security people. Yeah. And that's and that's what we did. After after Tupac died, I mean, there was a, there was a general feeling 
this has got to stop. We really have to change in what we're, what's yeah. going on in, in rap and hip hop. And after, after Biggie was killed, I think One it was that same. One thing I want to say not to stop you is it's not a problem just of rap and hip hop. This is a problem that's out in the communities. I mean, we, we're talking about it now more because it's in our face, because we lost two people that we cared about and that were stars and was important to what we did. But this is a problem that mothers and family members and, and people are facing every day. Yeah. And it's not just fair that everybody run to it now because it's Tupac or Biggie. It's happening every day. We need to put a stop to it just because we're, we're killing each other yeah. and it needs to stop. Welcome back to a conversation with Sean Puffy Combs. All right, so anyway, there you have it. Now, with that all being said, okay. now I wasn't going to play that whole thing because, of course, it's like 20 minutes long, but I wanted you all to see. Uh, and I'm sorry, I thought that was the interview with Oprah, but that was a different interview. But nonetheless, that's also a video I wanted to show you. But here's the thing. I find it also interesting how calm and poised he was and how he talked in such a somber tone as if he's such a sweet little angel when all along he was a devil, okay? Because there's been rumors for years that he, in fact, had something to do with Biggie's death as well as Tupac's, okay? So I'm sorry, who's defending him? Please. Cat said, uh, Cat I says, you couldn't even call that man's mother to let her know. Okay? Isn't it awful? Isn't it awful? Okay, M. Shante says, wonder if his story changed over the years. I, I doubt it because he's a good liar. I think Diddy's a very good and skilled liar, beloved. Hazel said, fake. He's doing all the killing liar okay that's exactly what i think or having it done okay so i want y'all to pay attention but now let's talk about okay and let me just say this for those of you let me see if i can put this in the chat real quick okay this is the link for the next live that's going to start on this channel at 11 15 right after this okay because i got to get this information out like i said uh before the backup channel so we'll do the backup channel later with that all being said let's talk about okra let me go ahead and pull up these receipts about Oprah going to Diddy's parties and all of that. Okay? Here it is. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Like I said, she's been partying with Diddy. Here's something from 2013. I'm going to share my screen. Oprah parties with Kim, Kanye, Diddy, and Jagger. All right. Party over here at Jimmy Ovine's uh, at Jimmy Ovine's tweeted Oprah late Saturday, apparently having a blast at music producer and American Idol mentor uh, Jimmy Iovine's house. And she posted a photo of herself with Diddy and Kanye West, adding "Late night with the fella," uh, but she wasn't just with those guys. And there she is, right there. Oprah also shared a photo of herself with Mick Jagger, saying it was her first time meeting the Rolling Stone, Rolling, uh, meeting the Rolling Stone. And yes, he dances like Mick Jagger. She's, she noted. Okay, so I want you all to pay attention. And also, she was partying with R. Kelly apparently because it says TMZ reports the combo bash was a birthday party for Liberty Ross, Jimmy's girlfriend, and an Emmy pre-party. Among the other guests were Dre, Dr. Dre, Brian Grazer. Uh, R. Kelly gave an impromptu performance. Meanwhile, Kim Kardashian shared a shot of herself with Oprah from the party. Okay, so please pay attention. Oprah was partying with Diddy back in the day, and at the end of the day, like I said, they were very good friends. Because he even went to Oprah for advice. Okay, let me pull this receipt up. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. I'm going to share this on the screen. See that Sean P. Diddy Combs consults Oprah, okay? Consults Oprah, cable TV veterans, to create an ESPN for young urban music fans, uh, Revolt TV. And so let's get into it. Likes up, everyone, please. Don't forget to like and share. Thank you in advance. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing. 
Okay, so here's what it says. And so he called the queen of all media herself for some advice. He says, she just said, it's a lot of hard work. You know, she was honest. It's a, it's a gift and curse being a celebrity where people think you're doing something because you're a celebrity and they can't understand uh, that you have a great business mind too. Combs has surrounded himself with cable TV veterans, including former ESPN executive Keith Klinscales, uh, who said the channel expected, who said the channel expected to have a strong uh, journalism component, aiming to snare kids, kids surfing YouTube for music videos, saying we'll talk about music the way Sports Center talks about sports. He added, "Okay, so there's just another receipt. Okay, Oprah has been friends with these people." They have engaged in nefarious activities. They have been accused. And you all think this is coincidence? Harvey Weinstein. Okay, Jeffrey Epstein. All right. Um, David Geffen. Like I told you all days ago, who has been accused of being the person who started those malicious rumors about Michael Jackson uh, being, you know, the things they said about him. Okay, so please pay attention. Russell Simmons. Okay, she protected him. And then there's Diddy. And we're not supposed to believe the things that we've heard about Oprah and why she really opened up that school and what really happened at that school. I'm sorry, but I beg to differ. Okay, I beg to differ. And here's another thing. How you know Diddy was all down with Oprah because he was actually grooming young Miami to be another Oprah. Listen to this. Okay, and this just came out last October. For those of you who missed it, like up, everyone please like and share. I'm gonna share my screen. See that? Diddy believes young Miami will be a billionaire like Oprah Winfrey. Is that why he helped her to get that, sh that show? Uh, Carisha. Now, Sean Diddy Combs says he believes young Miami is capable of reaching similar heights as Oprah Winfrey in the entertainment industry. According to the Jasmine brand, the 53-year-old recently did an interview and listed stars in hip-hop that he feels has what it takes to be moguls in their own right. Diddy said that the City Girls member is similar to the billionaire in the diversification of her growing empire. Uh, he said she reminds me of Oprah with endless possibilities that she has as far as her clothing line, television shows, performances, live podcasts. And this is all what the Bad Boy Records founder said. He said, I really respect both of their hustles and see them being able to break through. Diddy's comparison of Young Miami and Winfrey comes a year after the Florida native first voiced her aspirations of following in the iconic talk show talk uh, talk show host footsteps. Now, the rap star who hosts her Carisha Please show uh, noted the Mississippi native and radio legend Wendy Williams as figures whom she was inspired by, uh, saying, "I want to, I want to take it to the next level. I want to be like." Um, I think she has a podcast now, a person like Wendy Williams. Uh, this is what she says. I'm dreaming big. I want to go to the highest of the high. I want to be the black Oprah. First of all, that sounds so stupid. She, this is to let you know her level of intellect. She wants to be the black Oprah. Oprah is black. But I digress. Young Miami has also credited Diddy with advising her to begin her career as a media personality uh, based off of her popularity on social media. I said, people just love to hear me talk. You know, whenever I talk or whenever I go on Instagram live, it goes viral, she said. Uh, so one day I was talking with Diddy and he was like, yeah, you should do a podcast. It would be good for you. And that's how it came out. It was just a conversation of me just always going viral off, off the way I talk and the engagement that I used to get off Instagram live. In addition to Young Miami, Diddy also named late rap star Nipsey Hussle, who he says he viewed as a younger version of himself. I'm sorry, how? And Travis Scott is artists that he feels could become billionaires in the future. I know he did not compare himself. I know he did not compare himself to Nipsey Hussle. Okay, I just want you all to pay attention. And I already showed you all the receipts and the uh, footage from where I believe, or the pictures and stuff, from where I believe that he absolutely is the friend that Lauren Lauren London was talking about when she said they reached out, her friend, her homeboy, reached out to Nipsey for her. Yeah, exactly. So I think he sent her at Nipsey at the end of the day. Please make it all make sense. And then let's not forget about uh, the whole thing with Usher and Diddy. And then also... Usher and Russell. 
Because remember, Usher went down to Bali to vacation with Russell months ago. And here's one of the parties that Okra was at with Diddy. Please pay attention. This is receipts right here. This is the proof that she was partying with him all this time for decades. And what do you think she was doing? Y'all think she didn't know about the freak offs? Y'all think that she wasn't possibly at some of those freak offs? Oh, I believe she was. Please pay attention. I believe she absolutely was. Now, can you all see that? Let me see if I can enhance it. Like up, everyone. Please like and share. Okay, I can't enhance it. But nonetheless, there you see Oprah. And then she's next to Pharrell, it looks like. And then Diddy's in the front of her. And then here they are again. She's dancing with Pharrell. They look like they're having a whole good time, honey. Look at Usher. You see Usher next to Pharrell and Oprah on the other side. Diddy's in the middle of, this, of the other shot. Honey, they're having the time of their lives, okay? Oprah parties with Nerd and Diddy. That's what it says. After co-hosting the Met Costume Institute Gala on Monday, May 3rd, Oprah Winfrey let loose for some hot and fun with Pharrell, uh, Diddy, and Usher at the after party at the New York City's Mark Hotel. Vogue Editor-in-Chief Anna Wintour asked Nerd or NERD to perform at the exclusive event uh, where the in-style crowd swept through their designer clothes, designer suits and gowns while dancing to the band's rock, rap rock hits. Okay? And so there you have it. Having the time of their lives. All right? But somebody got mad the other day because I was going in on Oprah. I find it all interesting. Now let's talk about Russell. Russell Simmons. And how Usher went to visit him while he was on vacation, in case y'all forgot or didn't even know. Okay? Reggie said there's no coincidence. Exactly. I don't believe it. I don't believe in coincidences. Now look at this. And remember, Gene Deal said Diddy learned it from Russell. And then here you have Russell and Usher. All right, now let's talk about it. Here is what it says. Usher made a pit stop on his on his Bali vacation, uh, visiting one of the island's most famous residents, Russell Simmons. The singer carved out some carved out uh, carved out some time from his own gateway with his wife, Jennifer Giocochia. I hope I said that right. Uh, to meet up with the hip hop mogul for some yoga, meditation, and inner peace. And it sounds like Usher's visit is lifting Russell's spirits. Now, the Def Jam co founder shared video Sunday of him leading a yoga class with Usher occupying one of the mats on the first row. And it looks like they got a great stretch working up a sweat. Russell had nothing but good things to say about Usher's presence, saying his old pal ex uh, excluded. Um, this old pal, I'm sorry, exuded an amazing generosity of spirit and overall great energy. Russell also posted a bunch of smiling photos with Usher during their time together, who appears to have been in the area on a getaway of his own, this following their recent Las Vegas wedding. Now, in his social media post, Russell explains how Usher came to the perfect time, came at the perfect time, a saying, when I was at the lowest point in my life, now, listen to this part. I find this all very interesting. He said, this is what Russell says. He came at a very interesting time, at the perfect time. When I was at the lowest point in my life, I woke up and this man was sitting by my bed. I had known Usher since he was a kid, but we really bonded because of our mutual love for self-discovery and our belief in yogic science as a direct route to realizing God's consciousness in ourselves. Russell adds that people remember to remember this. A friend walks in when others walk out. I will never forget the generosity of spirit I witnessed in this man. God bless you, baby bro. At Usher, love you. Now, as you know, Russell lived in Bali since 2017, and he's been slammed with multiple sexual misconduct lawsuits and allegations, of which he says have caused him great suffering. Russell has denied that he ever assaulted anyone, and despite those problems, uh, they don't seem to be affecting his relationship with Usher. I just want y'all to pay attention. Now, let me show you some photos. First of all, I find it interesting that he said he woke up with this man sitting on my bed. 
Who's sitting on your bed while you're asleep? How did he get in your room? I have a whole lot of questions, don't y'all? Okay, I'm sorry. Woke up, this man sitting on your bed. But anyway, I digress. I'm just saying it sounds strange. At least to me it does. Here's a yoga class. Okay. And that was from uh, March 4th of 2024. Okay, so that was just a month ago. That was just a little over a month ago. That all being said, I find it all very interesting. So, okay. Aqua Us Love says suspect activities. I'm just saying, Queen Sam said, watching you sleep. I know, right? It's all crazy. This is all crazy. So anyway, with that all being said, now let's talk about Diddy and Usher. Because we've heard the stories and the rumors about Diddy and Usher, but here's what you all may not have noticed. I want you all to pay very close attention because the song, I Need a Girl, let's go over those lyrics. Let me pull up those lyrics. Okay, now let's read some of these lyrics here. Here it is. I'm pulling it up right now. Likes up, everyone. Please don't forget to like and share. Thank you in advance, beloveds. Okay, here we go. All right, now I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Let me get to the part I'm specifically looking for. Hold on, beloveds. It's taking a second for this to pull up. Okay, here we go. Now I want you all to pay attention because some of these lyrics uh, sound just like something that Diddy said in a video. Okay? Sounds just like something he said in a video and some people didn't seem to notice it. Okay, here we go. Let me share the screen real quick. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. All right, now I'm going to enhance that to see if you all can see it. Okay, I hope you all can see that. Okay, now pay attention to this part. Can you all see that? I hope you can. Now pay attention to this part that says, you was more than my girl. We were, we was like brothers. Okay, first of all, this is your woman. How is she like a brother? But pay, pay attention. You was more than my girl. We was like brothers. All night, we would play fight under covers. Now you go and I can't love you like I really want. It. Okay, so just pay attention to that. Okay, you was more than my girl. We was like, you was, we was like brothers. All night, we would play fight under covers. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound anything like this? Please get the likes up. Thank you in advance. I should look like he fresh off a goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and 
I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's not, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early, and now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world, and I'm yo, like, what the fuck did Puff just say? I'm sorry, isn't that what the song said? He said, we was brothers. He was 10 and I was older. This was my brother. We was like brothers. And he said that we would wrestle in the morning over the cornflakes. Ah, I'm sorry, isn't that the same lines in the song? Isn't that the same lines in the darn song? Ah, nobody else caught that. Eva said, you nailed it, Queen. Thank you, beloved. Okay, please pay attention. Did he write that song for Usher? I have a whole lot of questions. Claudette said, just pitiful. Okay, remember you heard it here first. Okay, this is all nefarious. Mm, mm, mm. Real McCoy said he's been doing things to Usher since he was 10 years old. Okay, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, so with that all being said, Janet says, Lisa Cabrera carries enough to show the eclipse today. Oh, well, beloved, I'm showing the eclipse too, so sit down somewhere. I just texted one of my moderators and told them to send me the info. But the next thing is, I'm going live after this video about the red heifer sacrifice. For those of you who want to know about that, because this is going to be much worse than the eclipse. Okay, possibly worse than the eclipse. So please pay attention. And so um, for the little person who left me that comment, let me tell you something, beloved. If Janice Davis... If you don't like what the queen is cooking, you can always exit the stage left. Okay, that's what you can do. At the end of the day, I already did a whole video about the eclipse that was very informative about a week ago. Please go check it out. I don't know why some of y'all keep trying the queen. Did not just have this conversation with C. Martinez. Okay, did not just have this conversation with C. Martinez. And if you don't like what the queen is cooking or how I'm doing what I'm doing, why are you in my chat? I mean, it's not hard to go follow somebody else. Okay, now I wasn't going to show the eclipse because I was going live on the backup channel, but I postponed that live so that I can show it. But first, I'm gonna show you all this very important prophecy about the red heifer, okay? That goes along with the solar eclipse. Please pay attention, all right? Thank you in advance. All right, but so anyway, I find it, King Leo said, Teach Queen, you know I will, beloved. Okay, so I find it all nefarious. Kevin said, reparations will be paid in people's dreams. Why? Because it's all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine, hanging pictures on my wall. <laughs> Not that you got me up here quoting Biggie's lyrics that I wasn't even prepared for. You need to sit down, Kevin. That was funny. Okay? And so with that all being said, honey, these haters don't quit coming in my chat, honey, until like I don't talk about relevant news. And y'all, first of all, y'all don't tell me what to talk about. And that's what you don't do. I already posted the link. So now with that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast, beloved, because I want to post the link on Twitter, okay, because I have made some changes. Like I said, I postponed the backup channel, uh, the live for that till 6 o'clock. And we're about to talk about this eclipse and the red heifer sacrifice. I did a very good PowerPoint presentation for you guys yesterday, so we're going to get into it. Moderators, please share that link. I'm putting the link in the chat. Uh, the video is going to start at exactly 11.15 and there is the link and it's on the same channel, alright? So with that all being said, I want to thank you all for tuning back in once again. Please like and share, like and share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell. Click the word all so you're notified each time Queen Goddess goes live. We have 672 people in the chat. Could we please get the likes to match the amount of people in the chat, okay? For those of you that are haters in the chat, just coming by to say little slick stuff. I don't expect you to like the video, okay? So I'm not talking to you. But for everyone else who appreciates the Queen's hard work and due diligence, okay, please get the light stuff. All right. Thank you, beloveds. With that all been said, I wish you all love, peace, and prosperity. Yes, Queen Sam said, we have eight minutes to be there. That's right. Juju said, love you to life, Queen. I love you right black. I love you all to life. So with that all been said, each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most time first in your lives.
hit him with that flavor. Sold all in my skin, God all in my blood. Kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh, I'm the hottest right now. That's right. See a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style. They be doing too much. I'm the queen, it's too easy. It's like they all in pop fives, how they be talking so greasy. Real I just sit back and laugh while these haters get mad. So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter. I tell them they can do better. These snakes in the grass can leave a bite on your ass. Cause y'all be trusting too fast. I got my foot on the gas, other one on they necks. Dropping receipts on haters, you better show some respect. I'm never facing regrets, we only facing the threats. Running through every challenge like a relay, break no sweat. It's a cold game, so I got that blanket with me. Now that my people awaken, ain't no going to sleep. I do not play by my peace, this time I'm playing for keeps. You talking slick, but when I see you like them ends, we gon' meet. And now I got gold all in my skin, God all in my blood. Kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen, why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood. Kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got...